What's going on, all you kaiju enthusiasts out there? Your two favorite monster hunters are back tonight, and we are talking about the brand new Godzilla film. Just hit theaters this past month. We finally got a chance to check this out, and boy, was it awesome. We're talking about the new film, Godzilla Minus One. That's right. These two wild boys are huge fans of Godzilla. We were just reviewing uh, Monarch Legacy of Monsters on Apple TV Plus. And we, in that review, we were talking about, you know, being super excited to go see Minus One. Huge buzz around this film. Everybody's talking about how phenomenal, you know, it is. It's one of the best Godzilla movies ever. And we can say that we've seen it, and it's up there for one of the best Godzilla movies of all time, for sure. It goes old school. It's a Japanese Godzilla vibe to it, but for, right from the get-go of the film, it just kicks off with a bang. Introduced to uh, Shukushima, he's like a kamikaze pilot, lands on an island, and Godzilla shows up and just takes out the, the island. Yeah, this is awesome. This is serving on the backdrop of, you know, uh, Japan just have lost the war. It's after the nuclear bomb was dropped and them trying to pick up their lives. It's this pilot that, um, you know, failed the mission and the war, and he's dealing with all the trauma from that. And while they're at this outpost, um, Godzilla shows up in the dark and it's like a, you know, it's kind of like a slasher horror film scene when he shows up because he's in the shadows at first. And then you see him, they shine a spotlight and all you see is his face and all his spines. It's awesome scene. He starts biting people, you know, destroying everything in his path. And it really sets the tone for the rest of the film. This is really going for the aspect where Godzilla should be feared. And it mixes in that with, you know, the great special effects that this movie has. It also mixes it in with a great story too. you know, post-war Japan trying to pick up the pieces after the bomb dropped. All these people, you know, are trying to survive. It's the survivors of that and the aftermath of that. And this kamikaze pilot, uh, Shikishima, he's our main character that we're going to follow throughout the rest of the film. Um, he ends up, um, you know, taking in this homeless woman and this child, and they become much like his uh, family unit in this film. And the, and the reason why he does what he does in this movie, he's he, he's staying alive. He wants to be a survivor. And basically, the Japanese citizens are going to have to band together if they're going to try to stop this monster from attacking and basically destroying all of Japan. Yeah, this isn't like your normal, you know, as of late Godzilla movies where he's cute and cuddly and he's friends with humans. <laughs> he's yeah. going after humans, you know, he's just a, a fucking monster. He's t attacking, he's a predator. He's just going after people one by one and they're trying to figure out a way to stop him. And, uh, and it really does have that horror thriller aspect to it in the edge of your seat, you know, with him kind of showing up in the background in the shadows and just start killing people, taking out cities, pulling his tail and just making it look super easy. Thousands of people just dying like that. And, you know, like, how, how are we going to stop this monster? This huge, you know, larger than life creature. So they really dive into that in this film, and which I, I really appreciated. It felt like an old school Godzilla movie meets Jaws meets Jurassic Park, like in my mind. All the visual effects looked amazing. Probably one of the best looking Godzilla movies I've seen. Compared to the 1998 film, Matthew Broderick, to, to this movie, it just, it's phenomenal. It's so, you know, realistic, you know, him swimming around in the ocean and just popping mm -hmm. up. Absolutely. it's He's never looked better, never been more uh, scary and terrifying. The way that the citizens, Shikishima and the citizens have to band together to come up with a plan, that part was really interesting of the movie too is basically a rallying call from what was left of the military and the government and realizing that basically they're asking these people to go back to war after they've just been in a war and they just went through the nuclear bomb. They just lost the war, obviously, with uh, what happened back in the 40s with World War II and that, you know, really dealing with the trauma of that and now they have a huge um, monster coming from the ocean, you know, with obviously radioactivity from the atomic bomb. He has that power harnessed. He's seemingly unstoppable. And he's just went through the city and decimated everything in his path. You can imagine how scared he'd be. And they really, you know, 
focus in on that in this film. And that's what uh, makes it intriguing the whole way. It's not just a special effects uh, marvel. It's the story, too. And it's how Shikishima is able to deal with his trauma. And by the end, he really, you know, for a while there, you know, being a kamikaze pilot, he was, you know, going into certain death. But by the end of this film, he's he wants to be a survivor. And that's basically what the ultimate message is in this film. He's going to survive at all costs, but he's going to do whatever it takes to try to take out this monster from wreaking any more havoc on the city. But man, what a special effects spectacle this is. The monster itself, like you mentioned, just looks fantastic. It doesn't it looks real. You know, it looks like something uh, maybe like a dinosaur from back in the day. You can imagine getting some of the nuclear waste on it and mutating, getting larger and then living in the ocean, you know, to hide. But once it comes up and you see how big it is and how easy it smashes buildings, has trains in his mouth, you know, just swats at people, takes them out. It's very much in line with the scenes that you saw from Jurassic Park where the T-Rex was loose, but on a much bigger scale. And this movie delivered everything that I wanted it to be. And, um, you know, this one is a Godzilla movie that should have been in the monster verse. You know, Godzilla 2014 was good, but I feel like this is probably the best one that I've seen. And it was done, um, you know, like the old films, the, the Toho Japanese films it even has the old Godzilla theme when the monster's near. Uh, it has that uh, sound effect there, that that score. So that really lent to it. And uh, they really did a fantastic job on this film. Uh, did you notice, like, when he's like towering over the cities, it looked like a model, like a like model set, <laughs> just like yep. breaking through it, like old school films. Yeah. And I appreciated that. I love that little attention. Yeah, you know, paying homage to the old films, the original films, when Godzilla was in, introduced. I noticed that throughout the film. I thought they did a really spectacular job with that, and uh, really great story. Post war, you know, Japanese, what they're dealing with, picking up the pieces. This character, the kamikaze pilot you know forming this family forming this bond with a woman and a child and what they have to go through and take down godzilla i thought the ending was very satisfying i didn't expect that and really cool setup so yeah. possibly maybe some more movies coming out from this director from takashi yamazaki as the director hopefully you got some more films coming from this director really impressed first time seeing a movie from this director and i want to see more Love this. This is a movie I would definitely go rewatch in the theater. It's a movie you must watch in the theater and a movie you must own for your home collection. So that being said, I'm going to give Godzilla minus one. I'm going to give it a four and a half out of five. Godzilla hair pieces. Spectacularly done. Everybody involved in this. The acting was phenomenal. Obviously, a bunch of people that American cinema goers aren't familiar with, all these Japanese actors, they all did great. Believable, scared, acted terrified. And also the way they band together, just totally a great film all around. Everything about it, technical aspects, the special effects were phenomenal. Um, I, I need to look and see how much they spent on this. But like you mentioned, it's a lot of the sets that they build were practical and it was the models that they used, which, you know, you can tell certain shots, but it just feels more realistic than watching the CGI you know, monsters running like we just saw in the latest, you know, Kong versus Godzilla trailer it just takes you out of it right away. Whereas this, you know, it's models, but the way that they do it, it just like the scope of it just looks awesome. And it looks more believable. Your mind's able to say, hey, this is real rather than looking at like a CGI screen. So just a, a great film all around the story. The story is really what uh, drove it home, not only directed by this fantastic director, Takashi Yamakazi, but also he wrote the screenplay too. So I want to see more from this. And there's definitely a hint of that by the time the credits roll. And the rumor is that they they want him involved in a Star Wars film. Of the, so that he's already getting praise and being seen in Hollywood. So we're going to be seeing more from this director and writer. And I definitely want to see it. So that being said, obviously we both love this film. And it's one of those films where I'm going to give it the rare five out of five Gojira hair pieces. <laughs> a perfect Godzilla hair piece. I didn't see that coming, yeah. but it's that damn good. But we want to hear from all you guys out there. What did you like about Godzilla minus one? What didn't you like about it? What's your favorite Godzilla film? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to stay up. Subscribe. Also check out these wild critics on Facebook, X, and Instagram and our website, sunfellows.com for the latest, greatest TV movie news and reviews. And this movie was so engaging and entertaining and all around awesome that we didn't even tell you guys that it's not in English. There's English subtitles, but everything's spoken in Japanese 
and it it didn't matter whatsoever. It was that good. Performances are that good. Godzilla was scary as hell. Just an awesome film that I wish would uh, get more recognition, open up in more theaters because it really deserves it. This is going to go down as one of the best Godzilla films ever. And obviously my favorite that I've seen thus far. Can't wait to see if this uh, director does another one of these. It'd be interesting to see and maybe go into a different decade. I liked the aspect that they went in back in time and especially dealing with the, the after effects of World War II. So really cool. Um, we want to hear from you guys if you guys have had a chance to watch it. So please let us know. We love hearing from you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching our review of Godzilla Minus One. And until the next Cinefellas Movie Review, I'm Uncle Henry Hill. And I'm Uncle Logan Myers signing out until the next movie review. Cheers. Cheers.